We know now that in the early years of the 20th century, this world was being watched closely by intelligence greater than man's, and yet as mortal as his own. We know now that the human beings busied themselves about their various concerns. They were scrutinized and studied, perhaps almost as narrowly as a man with a microscope might scrutinize the transient creatures that swarm and multiply in a drop of water. With infinite complacence, people went to and fro over the earth, about their little affairs, serene in the assurance of their dominion over this small, spinning fragment of solar driftwood, which by chance or design, man has inherited out of the dark mystery of time and space. In the 39th year of the 20th century came the great disillusionment. It was near the end of October. Business was better. The war scare was over. More men were back at work. Sales were picking up. They're coming back. Few men even considered the possibility of life on other planets. And yet, across the gulf of space, minds immeasurably superior to ours regarded this earth with envious eyes. And slowly and surely, they drew their plans against us. What do these things want? And why are they here? Joe, wake up! They're all about you! All around you! Two soldiers spilled away in each direction, been caught attempting to make off with a piece of ridiculously expensive CIA-owned hardware. Can you fly this thing? He asked. Probably better than you can. For three days, I fought my way along roads packed with refugees, the homeless, burdened with boxes and bundles containing their valuables. All that was of value to me was in London. By the time I reached their little red brick house, Carrie and her father were gone.